first off, I want to show this hat, which is fucking awesome. Um, I got this from the uh, store in the mall um, called Spencer's. So Spencer's, and there's my ugly hat here. It's a fucking nightmare. But um, got it from Spencer's. And I really love this hat. I love it's got Freddy's claws on the side. It's got sort of like it's bleeding. Love when they incorporate the red and the green. Um, I've been wait. I've been waiting for a officially licensed Nightmare on Elm Street hat for a long, long, long time. And Warner Brothers, out of nowhere, I guess apparently decided to do one. They did one for the It remake too. Don't care. Don't give a shit. Um, but for fans of that film, cool. They can they can have a hat to wear. Uh, if you love this movie and this franchise as much as I do, and you like hats, like I would definitely recommend getting this now, because I guarantee this is this is gonna go out of print, and you're gonna be kicking yourself because you didn't get it. That's happened to me with other hats, like with RoboCop hats, and they came out in 2014. I didn't get one of them because I didn't know that much about them. So it's one of those things that's like, if, you, if you're if you into hats as much as I am, like, get in on the hats when they're there. Uh, because if, if you wait, you're, you're not going to be able to get them. But anyway, I uh, just wanted to pimp out this hat. Uh, it's It was definitely worth the money. So I'm just going to start showing some stuff. Uh, I'm just going to dig through this stack here. This is Blu-rays right now. Uh, and then I'm going to get to some DVDs and I'm going to try to go through them as fast as possible. So I got the fly two on Blu-ray. This is a release from Australia and it says it's region B, but it's region free. It's, it's, it's not region locked. I love this film. I think it's incredibly underrated for some reason. Fox never decided to release this on Blu-ray. They only released the first film. Uh, this, I guess, has a little bit of a different transfer than the DVD, but it but it ports over all of the features from the DVD. So if you're a fan of Fly 2, pick this up. This actually is available. I don't like the M th sticker there. I'd rather that not be there, but that's just part of the whole thing when you get releases from overseas. But I'm really glad to have this on Blu-ray because I love this film. It's an incredibly underrated sequel. From one sequel to another, Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. This is the Screen Factory double feature. I got this from uh, Best Buy along with um, when I went to go pick up my new 4K Blu-ray player. Yes, I got a 4K TV and an LG 4K player. Um, I really love this LG 4K player. It loads 4K discs and Blu-rays and DVDs super fast. It doesn't have a lot of streaming options, but I don't really care about that. And the picture quality is amazing. How they upconvert certain DVDs is stunning to me, especially considering how old some of the DVDs I have are. Um, and also, regular Blu-rays just look great. So it's one of those things where it's a really good player. It's not. It wasn't necessarily cheap. But you get what you pay for, and it's a high-quality product. Compared to the Sony that was on sale, which had all these issues, apparently I was reading of it glitching out. And I don't want to pay close to 200 bucks for a player that keeps glitching out. I don't know about you. So, I got Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2 because it was a decent price. I like Ghoulies 2. That's the reason why I got it. Ghoulies is a piece of shit. But, you know, hey, it's for the collection. Also, this has some interviews and stuff on the Blu-ray. Got this at a thrift store. Love this movie, Air Force One. It was like two. It was three bucks. It was a good deal. Air Force One on Blu-ray. I know it came out in 4K recently, but I'm okay with the Blu-ray. Uh, one of my favorite Harrison Ford films. Get off my plane. Uh, so Air Force One. Speaking of 4K, Apollo 13. It was actually a pretty good price. I also got the Rambo trilogy. I got Rambo. I got First Blood, Rambo First Blood Part Two, and Rambo Three. I didn't. I I put them up on a shelf, and I don't. I don't really want to get them right now. But I did get them because I heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, I will actually talk more about those when the next Rambo film comes out, which I think is supposed to come out this year sometime. I think. I I don't know if that's one hundred percent or not. Um, 
But Paul 13, huge fan of this film. I think this will probably look pretty awesome in 4K. Uh, but I don't know because I haven't watched it yet. But yeah, so Paul 13 in 4K. Hell Knight, the Scream Factory release. I also got this at the Best Buy. I've heard the transfer ha ha is not as good as it could be, but I, I, I haven't seen the film yet, and I have don't really have much to compare it to. So, um, got it for the collection. So, Hell Knight. Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. This is a Hammer film. Uh, I've been really curious about this one because... There just are so many Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde films, and this seemed like one that was, oh, it's actually taking it in a different direction for once. It's not just the same thing, the same story. So I'm um, really curious about this, and it was a pretty good deal. So that's Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg here, folks. One Dark Knight, uh, underrated film. Uh, got this for a good deal on ebay this is a code red release but i don't know if the bill olsen did this because the, the, this there's a lot of work put into this and this is a good really good blu-ray so uh, my guess is that maybe his brother who does scorpion releasing worked on this because this is this is a high quality product and there's no banana man bullshit in on this disc either so if you've been putting off getting this because oh code red bill olsen's a d d asshole um don't because this is a great looking transfer way better than the original shriek show dvd and it has all the features from that plus some new ones it's a really high quality uh disc uh for the film the unborn i got this because i actually like this film the sequel is shit um but i like this movie i thought it was pretty pretty decent direct -to video movie uh from new horizons uh, actually, it was Cali Film, which is also owned by Roger Corman, if I remember correctly. I thought it had some pretty crazy shit and some pretty uh, creepy ideas and stuff going on here. So yeah, I was surprised that Chow Factory released this. And, and when they announced it, I was like, yep, that's definitely one I'm going to get one of these days. Not much in terms of features, but you know that's to be expected for such a lesser known film. House by the Cemetery. <laughs> I'm sorry, any time I think of this movie, I think of that, the way that the narrator of the trailer said the title of the movie. I don't know why he says it like that, but it's, 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 it's fucking hilarious. So this is for the Lucio Fulci collection and for uh, the um, horror collection period. Uh, I did get a DVD from a seller online, but like the disc was cracked so I decided to get the Blu-ray. It's a good deal too from Hamilton Book. I also got the Unborn from them, and I got another package on the way from them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna highly recommend Hamilton Book. HamiltonBook.com has some great deals on Blu-rays and DVDs. Definitely add them to your bookmarks list because they're they they have deals every week. So House by the Cemetery. Uh, the Blue Underground release, it's it's actually got a decent amount of features on it, too. Another Code Red release, Devilfish. Uh, probably not that much of a film, but once again, got it for the collection. Uh, for whenever I get around to get to working on the book again of 80s horror films. La Femme Nikita. I got this because I actually heard good things about it. Also, it was cheap, got it at Big Lots, for like three bucks. And it is for a French film class I'm taking. So I need to actually watch the film. So I, I wanted to have the movie so I could just watch it on my Blu-ray player, Blu player instead of watching it online. A Fistful of Dollars. This is the Kino Lorber release. Um, I still haven't seen this or the uh, other two Man With No Name films. But this is a really good deal. It was six bucks for the Blu-ray and it's got a ton of features on it. So if you're a fan of this film, I would definitely recommend picking this up someday. Up the Creek, which I I actually, I, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I think it's a really underrated, fun 80s comedy. So got that on Blu-ray from uh, Kino Lorber. Scream Factory's release of Screamers. 
Uh, I, I flipped it to this artwork because this is the artwork I remember and from the DVD and the VHS, and it's got Peter Weller. The original poster art is fine, but I, I just like seeing the cover art with Peter Weller's face on it. Um, haven't watched it yet, but I'm pretty sure the transfer is pretty good. It's got to be better than the flipper disc. Um, I spent years trying to find the film in widescreen because it was hard, man. It was like finding a needle in a haystack. If you, if you, if you ever tried to find the widescreen version of the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about because they, cause Sony at this time, they released two different formats simultaneously so they released a full screen version and then a version that had the widescreen and full screen versions on either side of the disc so one was just a full screen version only and the other was the widescreen of the full they did this for nowhere to run as well and it just became a total crapshoot to try to find the widescreen release and buying them online wasn't necessarily always a uh slam dunk and most of the time wasn't because you they never really told you which version it was so i'm really glad that this has a release that it's in widescreen and uh on blu-ray because for the longest time the shitty sequel was on blu-ray but not the not the for not the first film which is vastly superior this is a very underrated and overlooked sci-fi horror film and really really do want to review that one of these days the Final Girls heard good things about this. Got a good deal from a Facebook group uh, on this particular release. I thought about getting the DVD for the longest time, but I'm glad I didn't because this has a lot of features. The DVD has none. The DVD is bare bones, and this has a good chunk of features. So heard good things about this from friends and from other uh, genre buffs. So yeah, definitely looking forward to giving this a shot one of these days. Final Girls. Top Gun, up there with the best of the best. Um, love this film. Grew up watching this film on VHS. I checked out the opening credits on, on my 4K player and on my 4K TV. It looks and sounds amazing. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a 4K release one of these days, and it'll probably be better. But for right now, I'm fine with the Blu-ray. Uh, it ports over all the features from the uh, Special Edition DVD. Um huge fan of Top Gun and I'm definitely going to review this sometime this year along with Navy Seals two films that I really really like Dragnet just the facts ma'am uh, really enjoy this flick I think it's very underrated it's a lot of fun it, uh, it's a Tom Hanks Dan Aykroyd film that kind of has fallen through the cracks especially Tom Hanks film one of the best TV adaptations for me personally because it's so drastically different than the show. The show, to me, I could never get into. I thought it was boring. Dragnet, though, the movie, I've always gotten a kick out of ever since I saw it on VHS. So um, it's really, it's nice to see it get a Blu-ray. The features are eh, but, you know, I was expecting that, considering, you know, it's Dragnet. It's not going to have that. You're not going to get Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks to talk about the movie as much as I would love for them to do so. Rituals, the Scorpion releasing uh, version. I've been waiting for this. Really underrated gem. And uh, yeah, Scorpion releasing, they did a really cool job. They, the packaging and shipping was super fast. Uh, they kind of fucked up with the announced release date, though, because they were like, oh, it's coming out on this day and pre-orders will be open at this certain time, but the pre-orders weren't open until like 30 minutes after the time that they said it was going to be open. So that was a little bit of like a, a fuck up on their part, but they, they, it wasn't too big of a fuck up. Uh, but it was a little bit of a fuck up, but to that, you know, I, I'll let that slide. Cause it's, it's a, it's a nice product. They shipped it out fast and, yeah, it's just really nice to see that this film has a release. They also, they announced it was going to be released, I think, last year, but then they realized the print was not up to the quality that they would have, that they personally liked, which is really nice to see. A company, even a small company like Scorpion Releasing, which is not a big company, was like, hey, you know what? I don't want to release a shitty product to my consumers. I want to make sure I have the highest quality product to 
provide to my customers. Wow, what a novel concept. Really is. Companies like MVD should take some notes. Got uh, the Vinegar Syndrome uh, release of There's Nothing Out There. A film I've been really curious about seeing for the longest time, but I never really got around to getting it. And, and I'm glad I waited because this Blu-ray is great. I haven't seen the film yet, but I mean, by this Blu-ray being great, I mean, it is jam-packed with features. And even Vinegar Syndrome says it's like the most features they've ever had for any release. Um, and I, I love, I'm really starting to really love Vinegar Syndrome. I know people are all just slip covers or whatever, but their slip covers are amazing. Look at this. Like their slip cover game is out of this world and all these other companies need to need to, to catch up. I mean, the only one that I think comes close is, is arrow, but, um, and their quality of their product has been great. They've been really up in their game lately, vinegar syndrome. So I, I really want to give them a lot of, of praise because I think they deserve it. They really do. They also did the incubus and the children, which I think I've showed some of them already. Um, Got this from eBay of all places for like really cheap. Class of 1999, the Vestron Collector Series. And no, it's not a bootleg either. It's actually the original release. Um, it's official. It's totally legit. And what's crazy is... Excuse me. The seller did not advertise this as having the slipcover. But it came with it anyway, which is a fun bonus. And I would have been happy if it didn't have it. Because that's the kind of guy I am. Slipcovers are cool and nice, but I care about the disc. I care about the movie, okay? I care about the features. That's the most important thing to me. The slipcover, it's it's like a cherry on top of an ice cream sundae. It's 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 not something I necessarily absolutely have to have and in order to be satisfied with the product. But it's cool. It's, it's a cool thing to have. Um, but sometimes it's kind of like, what's the point? Especially with something like this. The uh, Kino Lorber release of Trilogy Terror, another great Hamilton book find. I mean, six ninety nine. I mean, it's insane. Um, it's just the same cover art, so it doesn't even have the original like TV poster art or the artwork that was on the Anchor Bay release. Like, it doesn't even do that. It's just the same cover art. So that's that's kind of like when you get the slip cover. It's kind of like, oh, that's not really that great. It's, that's not that cool. It's just like, eh, it's meh. But um. Glad I have it, though, for the collection, Trilogy of Terror. Really great uh, TV anthology. The Puppet Masters, a Donald Sutherland film. Uh, it also has a bunch of other actors. I mean, Yafit Koto's also in there. Really overlooked sci-fi flick. It's nice to see it's getting a Blu-ray release uh, from Kino Lorber. I think they're going to probably use the same transfer that was on the double feature from Mill Creek, which is a little disappointing. Uh, the double feature with Deep Rising, but um, I'm not 100% for sure on that. Uh, but it doesn't look like they're listing anything. They're not saying that it was a remastered uh, print. So they weren't saying it's remastered in 4K or anything. So yeah, it's probably the same one. But it has a lot of features, a lot of interviews with, with cast and crew. So it's worth, a, worth, a, worth picking up for that alone. The Master... The complete series uh it was like 8.99 and it was like the entire series um watched the intro to episode one this actually looks like my kind of show like i'm actually i'm really looking forward to watching this one of these days it looks like a lot of fun uh show kasugi's in it i think he plays the villain uh you have lee van cleef uh yeah it looks like a really enjoyable show it seems like the inch the first episode i think it has demi yeah it has demi Moore. demi Moore is in it like a young Demi Moore. So, yeah. Got that on Blu-ray. The complete series, The Master. Electric Dreams. This is the second site release. Who are going to be releasing Martin and Dawn of the Dead soon. Uh, sometime this year, which is awesome. Heard a lot about this film. Love the soundtrack. And I've heard that this is the best release out there for the film. Got a good deal for it on Amazon UK. Um, I... I, I you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Another one of those releases, though, where, like, second sight... They don't, I don't think... That, there's no, like, reversible cover art or anything. But, um... It's a high-quality slipcase, though. It's a high-quality slipcover. So, Electric Dreams. 
This this does not this does not have a release in the U.S. yet. I I do not think the only way to get it is overseas, which, I mean, it's kind of lame. But th this is this is region lock too. Certain C second sight releases are region lock, so you can only watch them with a region free player. These two are releases I got from a source that shall not be named. A goofy movie. I mean, if if they're watching, like. Your, your product is fucking amazing. Um, and ex an extremely goofy movie. And this is, I got this for free because he had a delay with shipping out a goofy movie and he made up for it, more than made up for it by sending me the sequel for free. And this is, this is, it's a widescreen. It looks amazing. The, this, this seller makes products that are on par with official releases, if not better than some of them. Um, it's the same guy who did True Lies, and he's going to be doing The Abyss, and I'm so fucking pumped about it. I can't tell you. It's a secret. I'm a part of a secret club, um, but uh, there are ways to get in contact with him and, and get his product. I'm just letting you know. Uh, just have to, to be in the right place but and talk to the right people. But yeah, I mean, this his products are, are amazing. So it's really nice to see a goofy movie. That Disney's never gonna do it, even though they're releasing products. They have T-shirts all over the place. They had their they have new hats and stuff for Powerline at Hot Topic and Spencer's and T-shirts at Target. But they don't have they're they're not gonna bother releasing the film on Blu-ray, which is stupid. I guarantee if they do release it, it's going to be one of those like Disney exclusive, whatever fucking things where you have to be a part of the, their club. If it's not, I'll be shocked. Another 4k release, Christine. I heard this, this is a pristine print. Like this is the best the films ever looked, which is, which is, I'm really looking forward to checking it out because I am a big fan of this film. Uh, really really enjoy this one it's one of my favorite stephen king films even though yeah some of the supporting cast kind of weak overall i really love the way it looks i love the score and i love the idea and the story um and it helps too kind of that keith gordon and i we, you know we, we kind of share a little bit of a resemblance uh but no no i mean <laughs> no christina 4k i'm really looking forward to checking that out i heard it's i heard it looks great um deep blue sea enjoy this one it's a fun creature feature uh i only had it on dvd so i saw the blu-ray so i decided to pick that up Lord Croft tomb raider last time you saw me talk about this movie i did review and i'm showing the dvd it was talking about i'd like to get it on blu-ray well finally got it on blu-ray i don't care about the sequel the sequel sucks and i still need to review that and the re reboot and maybe sometime this year but um I think this is very underrated and I really do think it'll look quite good on Blu-ray. Predator 2 on Blu-ray. There's a 4K release, but it's not sold separately. Like you have to buy the trilogy pack with Predator on 4K, which I already have. Predator and then Predator 2 and then Predators. And I'm like, I don't want Predators. I just want Predator 2. Uh, and you know, I'll, I'll just get the Blu-ray. I'm, I'm okay with that, with it. Um, I've heard the transfer is fine. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just stick with the, the Blu-ray. It was, it was pretty cheap too. I also got Batman Returns on a Steelbook Blu-ray, but it's up somewhere. I don't want to get it right now. Uh, Batman Forever and Batman Robin on standalone Blu-rays. The reason why I got those standalone is because I have a UK box set and I prefer, as a collector, to have separate releases because I do want to review those films again. Plus, Nolan's films one of these days because it's been a long, long time since I've talked about any of Burton's films or the Schumacher films. Speaking of Schumacher-type movies, Fantastic Four. This is the 1994 unreleased uh, Fantastic Four film. I got it from the website of the, of the guy who uh, did the documentary, which I also got. Uh, doomed which talks about the making of the of the film which i've heard good things about and looks really interesting um this is for the collection it was a good deal to get them both together this is not blu-ray quality this is like the best that it that that he could find um but yeah it's in high definition but not not really 
Uh, at best, it's like a DVD screener type of quality. Uh, at worst, a VHS. But it does have the theatrical trailer in 35mm, which is really nice to see. And that's on YouTube. And man, the 35mm uh, uh, trailer looks amazing. Uh, I really would actually like to see this get an official release. As bad as it, as bad as it is... Um, I would like to see this in, in quality that is not lower quality, like low res. So Fantastic Four, 1994 film, plus the uh, making of. And I'm not... Like I said, folks, I'm, I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg here. So here's some more uh, Blu-rays that I picked up. This is what happens when you spend, wait like months to do updates. The Brood... Second Sight release, really solid, underrated uh, film by uh, David Cronenberg. I know there's a Criterion release, but I got this. This was cheaper, and I, I decided to go with this, and I like Second Sight. Arrow Video's release of Heathers. Really fucking awesome movie. You already know my thoughts on this film. I love it, and I'm really glad Arrow Video came out with the Blu-ray. thing about this, though, is... It's region locked because of rights issues, which is fuck me gently with a chainsaw type of fucking news. But for especially for fans of the film, but if you're region free, get it, especially if you're a fan of the film, load of features, great transfer. Um, and I got it half off from Arrow Video's Christmas sale. I also got Blood and Black Lace, one of the first slasher films ever by Mario Bava. Cat Nine Tails for the Argento collection and the bird with the crystal plumage. So now, honestly, I've gotten, I mean, cause I also got, uh, yeah, I, I have Phenomena. I have Inferno. I need to get Suspiria. I need to get this, the, the synapse release, but other than I think opera is the only one I can think of in terms of like Argento films I want to get to upgrade on Blu-ray. I, I have all the Argento films that I really wanted to upgrade on Blu-ray. So yeah. Um, and Arrow, does, Arrow just makes a great product. Yeah, these are the re-releases that don't have the limited edition bells and whistles. Doesn't have the bo the booklets or whatever, but and slip covers and so on and so forth. I'm okay with that. I really am. Because I... Just, I, I mean, I haven't seen Cat Nine Tails and The Bird with Crystal Plumage in years, so I'm, I can't really say I'm, like, huge, giant fans of them. But I, I love Argento. I love his style and love his work. But I'm glad I got this. And I'm surprised that I was able to get this with the slipcover and everything, because I got it from Amazon.uk, and I guess they were already selling out of, uh, of the slipcovers and the release with the booklet. I'm glad I did, because I... I really like Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. It's a really a lot of fun. And this I've been waiting for a release like this for a long time. This is region locked, sadly. Um, so you Elvira fans kind of get screwed over um, if you're in the U.S. and you don't have a region free player. But maybe Scream Factory will, will come out with a U.S. release. Even if they do... I'm totally fine with this. I don't need to do anything extra. This has a 4K scan, bunch of other different features and everything, including the feature light documentary about the film. So, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Here is one of my most anticipated releases of 2019, Waterworld. Arrow Video's release of Waterworld. I mean, I pre-ordered this on Amazon a while back, and I paid like 22-something bucks for it. It's a steal. Um... High quality product, as usual, from Arrow. And this is the definitive version of Waterworld. I mean, this has three different cuts of the film. This has three discs. It's got uh, lobby cards. It's got a poster. So it's got the theatrical cut. It's got the European, like the TV cut. And it's got a fan cut that I think has some European cut footage called the Ulysses cut. And then it has this booklet, which is actually really fairly informative like talks about some of the interviews like one of the guys who did uh, some of the artwork for the game for the for the movie and the game talks about 
the computer game and the process behind making that and then talks about the water world merchandising and everything so yeah this is this is really cool um there's like an interview with kevin coster on here too if i remember correctly yeah storm gathering from 1995 which is, it's an interview with kevin costner from the time and i like the film and I did want to get it on Blu-ray because I think this would look amazing on Blu-ray. And I heard, I saw a lot, of, the Arrow knocked it out of the park again. The transfer is amazing. Uh, way better than the uh, last Blu-ray. But the reason why I was so excited about this is a feature-length documentary, uh, which is called Maelstrom, The Odyssey of Waterworld. And it's feature-length and it's over two hours. Like, it's over two hours. And I was like, wow, really? It's that long? And I was like, oh man, that's, that's pretty, pretty long. I don't think it's over two hours. It's close to two hours. I, I forgot that exactly how long it is, but it's quite lengthy. It's definitely feature length. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it because I've always thought that the making of this film would make for an awesome movie because it's just such a epic undertaking and it was insane. And all these things you hear about it for people who worked on it, things were just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to watch the documentary. And yeah, I'll, I'll probably give my thoughts on this set sometime in the near future. Because I, I really do want to check the film out again. I'm going to check out the Ulysses cut. I'll check out the longer version. And uh, check out the features and everything. The last Blu-ray I'm going to show you is this set. Sherlock Holmes, the complete Granada television series. Because... I grew up watching this particular version of Sherlock Holmes with my grandmother on PBS and I really do genuinely like this series. It's not just nostalgia. Jeremy Brett is the best actor who ever played Sherlock Holmes and I really did want to get it for the collection and I, I, I'm really looking forward to revisiting the series. Because I watched a few episodes before I even got this. Uh, I think they were like web rips. And I was really surprised by like how much it held up. And now that I'm older, like I'm really able to appreciate this show even more. So yeah, this is, this is really cool. So this is a set that has all of the episodes of the Jeremy Brett series. Plus all of the movies. So... And may Jeremy rest in peace. Um, thank you for just, just, just being such an awesome Sherlock Holmes. I mean, this is the this is Conan Doyle Sherlock Holmes come to life. No one's ever come nearly as close to bringing this bringing Sherlock Holmes of the printed page to life as Jeremy Brett. So the rest are just a bunch of DVDs that we try to speed run through them. This is actually the WWE Attitude Era Attitude set, the three disc set. Doesn't have the case, just has the discs, but it was a dollar steel. I mean, when you get like three WWE discs for a dollar steel, absolute steel. Wizard of Gore remake with uh, Crispin Glover it was fifty cents. That's the, that's the main reason. Also, I like Crispin Glover. A Million Ways to Die in the West, just to see how it is. Death Ship, this is the Scorpion releasing DVD. The Fifth Floor, because it honestly looked pretty interesting. It's got a young Robert England in it as well. So the Fifth Floor. And... TMNT, The Next Mutation, Volume 1 and Volume 2. For the Ninja Turtles collection, I was always curious about watching more of this show, this train wreck. Uh, plus, I didn't pay that much for them at all. It was like two, two bucks, like three, less than two bucks, less than three dollars each, because I got them at Big Lots, brand new. Got this for like less than two bucks, and this looked really, really intriguing to me. Sixty-eight kill. Got this from a seller on a Facebook group from the UK, Paper House. Bernard Rose's uh, director debut, a film that I don't think has a release in the U.S. yet. Stark Raving Mad, a film with Sean William Scott. Shaitan, a French horror film that looked 
intriguing to me. Takes place around the holidays. Shriek. If you know what I did last Friday the 13th, looks fucking stupid. But kind of made me chuckle in some, some instances of the trailer. It's only 50 cents. Dorothy Mills. Saw the trailer for this. After I got this, because... No, actually, I saw the trailer for it on the disc. And this looks really interesting. This looks like it might be a, a gem. It really does. Elephant Man. David Lynch's film. I am not an animal. Uh, with John Hurt. Quicksand No Escape. I had no idea this even had a DVD release. Apparently it did. So this is Quicksand No Escape. A uh, film with Tim Matheson. I would love to see Buried Alive. Get a release someday from anyone. Hell, just do a double feature. I mean, that'd be really cool. Deep Cover with Lawrence Fishburne and Jeff Goldblum. Lake Placid, the DVD. I haven't seen the film, so I didn't want to get the Blu-ray yet. House with Michael Madsen and Bill Mosley. I think it's based on a book. Always been curious about this one. The other House movie that pretty much nearly everybody has forgotten about. The Lost, which is based on Jack Ketchum's novel. Uh, he also did The Girl Next Door. Dead Girl. Had some good reviews. Looked like it might be an, an interesting idea. The Red Shoes. A Japanese horror version of the famous story by Hans Christian Andersen. I saw the trailer for it on Shaitan. And it looked intriguing. Didn't cost me that much. The Walk. Always been curious about this one. So got it for a good deal. Bushwhacked for the collection. I didn't mind the film. I didn't think it was that bad. Six Pack. Kenny Rogers film. Got this at a thrift store. This apparently is out of print and rare. Goes for a pretty good price nowadays. Look, that might be a fun movie. Kind of like Stroke Race. That's really what it reminded me of in terms of like overall presentation. Another film that I got that I I have up top somewhere is Chain Dance, which is a drama with Brad Dourif playing a man in a wheelchair and Michael Ironside in a role where he's sympathetic and he's a he's a nice guy. And I had no idea the film even had a DVD release and I found it at FYE for really cheap on clearance, brand new. And I, I'm really curious to give that a watch someday because... Just not very often you see Brad Dourif and Michael Ironside together. And if you do, they're usually playing bad guys. And in this, they're not playing bad people. It's 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 a drama with Brad Dourif and, and Michael Ironside. Got a couple Macho Man Randy Savage DVDs. Ooh, yeah! Macho Madness. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the Macho Man Randy Savage DVD. I also got the Randy Savage story. These are for my WWE uh, DVD collection. Um, these were two of the ones that I really wanted to get over the years. Like They've been on my wish list for a long time. So really glad to get these uh, finally. Tracy Ullman DVDs, Tracy Ullman State of the Union. I actually had a lot of fun with this. I I, I'm, I I knew that she was a chameleon, but I had no idea how good she was at, at playing all different types of characters. So I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it enough that I, I just I just picked up season two, and I'm, I'm going to watch that uh, pretty soon. Speaking of stuff that I really enjoy, comedy-wise, Mad TV. I've had this set for years. I just this is a newer set that I got from a seller because my set had just really seen better days. The discs are flipper discs, and my set eventually the discs cracked, and I was like, no, I need I need to get a better set, and I got this set. I really enjoyed the first season. I I think it's honestly pretty underrated, and I actually watched the first four episodes again fairly recently, and they're still pretty funny. So I mean, for the longest time. <laughs> I was like waiting for Warner Brothers release season two and they never did anything until Shout Factory picked up the slack and released season two. 
as well as three and four, which I got recently. So through season three and season four. Sadly, though, the sales weren't that great, just like the sales weren't that great for season one. And because of that, Shout Factory uh, basically decided not to make any more seasons. So it's one of those things where fans of Mad TV, you're just stuck with seasons one through four. If you want to see any of the other seasons, you better find a bootleg. Beneath, with uh, it's a Shout Factory release. Got it at Big Lots. It was pretty cheap. The Amityville Curse for the collection. Um, yeah, I, I have I, I have a bone to pick with somebody involved with this production. And you know what? I, I'm going to wait to talk about this entire story. This sh just absolute fucking shit show involving one of the actors who star in this movie who gave me shit years ago for a rant video I did. Um, I'm going to save that for when I get around to re-reviewing it. And I do want to do that sometime because now I have all of them except for the new one, Amityville Awakening. And if anybody has Amityville Awakening and they don't want it, feel free to send me a message. I'll send you my address and you can send it to me. And I'll, I'll get around to reviewing it sometime this year because I do want to put the final nail in the coffin of this unnecessarily long franchise that does have some good st good films in it. But it's still it's a lot of fucking shit. And, and, and you have all these other unofficial Amityville movies that are just like, fuck, like every year an Amityville film, whether it's official or not, it's, it seems like there's like 50 of these fucking movies. That's what the Amityville curse is. Is that they will never stop making these fucking movies. <laughs> so, um... Alright, I'm almost done here. With the DVDs. This is gonna be, man. This is gonna be over an hour. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish up the DVDs. I'm gonna get my quick thoughts on the trailers and stuff. Little quick thoughts on the Liam Neeson thing and save some stuff with MVD for some other time because, like I said, only if I had time. I don't think I have time. So I'll save it for maybe a mini rant. Um, Tech War on DVD. XX. It's a dollar. And so I could beat the shit out of it later. Raw. The beginning, the best of seasons one and two, a dollar. I mean, it's probably not that great, but it's, you know, it's, it's a WWE DVD for like, you know, pretty cheap. Um, I realize though, this doesn't have all the discs. <laughs> this just has discs three and four. I did not know that, but it was a dollar. So like, really, it's not, not like it cost me that much money. So I Married an Ex-Murderer. This is the disc that actually looked really surprisingly good on my 4K TV with my 4K player up converted. Kill Theory. Arrival, because I've heard all these great things about it. Breathing Room. It's kind of interesting. It was 50 cents. The Sitter. I've been curious about this because it's essentially a remake of Adventures in Babysitting, but R-rated. So I've been kind of curious about that for the longest time. Hugo, I saw I saw this a long time ago, and I actually thought it was quite magical. American Made, saw this also a while back. I highly enjoyed it. Tom Cruise is great. The Gods Must Be Crazy. Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. Wasn't a fan of this, but it was cheap for the collection, and so I can give it another shot. City of Lost Children. Jean-Pierre Jeunet's just visually stunning film. Really glad to get that. Aguirre, Wrath of God, uh, or Aguirre. Heard it's really good. So I was like, all right. Shadowlands, because the DVD is fairly hard to find. This looks like shit, though. This is one of those HBO releases where it's non-anamorphic widescreen. The, the, the print wasn't that great to begin with. And that's too bad, because it looks like it has a... Some good performances by Anthony Hopkins and Deborah Winger. Um, so that is the DVDs and Blu-rays.